This week, Norwegian Cruise Line is shaking things up. Star of the Seas has hit a huge milestone, and a cruise outbreak has some surprising twists. Plus, we'll cover new fees in Alaska and Carnival's surprising response to guest feedback. If you're curious about how these changes might affect your next cruise, stick around. There's a lot to cover. Ahoy, travelers. It's Amy here with your weekly cruise news roundup and my thoughts on some of the biggest stories of the week. If you're a fan of Norwegian's Free at Sea program, it's going away at the end of the year. But fear not, because NCL is replacing it with their new plan called More at Sea, which they claim is bigger and better. And also, probably makes more sense to say More at Sea than Free at Sea when you're paying for it. Guests that are currently booked have received notification that their previously booked Free at Sea package will be replaced automatically. In a statement, the line said, As our guests, we want you to have more experiences that lead to more memories. This is why we are pleased to announce our new More at Sea program. The announcement continues, With the launch of More at Sea, we will sunset the Free at Sea Plus package, which will be modified on reservations made prior to August 1st, 2024, for sailings on or after January 1st, 2025. So what changes can you expect? Probably the biggest difference is the Premium Plus Beverage Package is going away. Those who have already purchased Free at Sea will be getting a refund for that portion of the package. However, those of us who love our drink packages don't need to fear as they're replacing it with the More at Sea Beverage Package, which will feature an enhanced unlimited open bar experience with comparable drink options to the original. Guests will still receive specialty dining meals. The amount depends on how long the cruise is and the stateroom type. So for a seven-night cruise, those in an interior only get one specialty dining credit, while those in a balcony or above get three. The new More at Sea package also allows guests to order three appetizers and three desserts with that specialty dining. Similar to the specialty dining, the Wi-Fi minutes each guest gets to use is based on the cruise length. So, for example, on our last NCL, we got 90 minutes each, and now it's 150. The one thing that hasn't changed is the $50 excursion credit. Does anyone use that? I guess if you were already going to book through the line, but on our cruise on the breakaway, every excursion we looked at was cheaper to book with a reputable third party than with NCL, even with that $50 credit. Of course, I always say if you have a very long excursion, it's going to take the majority of the time what you're on, that you're on port, or if it goes really far away, then you're probably best to go ahead and book with the cruise line because then you guarantee they're going to wait for you. The highly anticipated second Icon class ship, Star of the Seas, is officially floating on her own hull after reaching an important construction milestone. Now, this is a big step as the ship moves closer to her August 2025 debut. It took over 35 hours to float out Star of the Seas with 92 million gallons of water pumped into the dry dock. Once the doors open, four tugboats move the massive vessel, which is set to be around 250,000 gross tons and about 1,000 feet to the outfitted pier. This event, attended by shipyard and cruise line executives, even featured a ceremonial cannon blast to honor the workers who have put together the ship's hull. Now, Star of the Seas moves into the next stage, focusing on her interior, which will bring the ship to life. Bookings on the Star of the Sea have opened, but the inaugural sailing has already been pushed back with the company stating, while we're working hard on completing our newest icon ship, Star of the Seas, and after a review of the work that remains to be done, we're unfortunately forced to delay the ship's delivery date. The new inaugural sail date is set to be August 31st, 2025, where the ship will offer seven night Eastern and Western Caribbean itineraries. Some guests on board Royal Caribbean's Radiance of the Seas have been sick this last week as they cruise around Alaska. The CDC has now confirmed that this was due to a salmonella outbreak. 180 guests out of over 2,000 on board, along with three crew members, reported feeling ill. Now, since this represents over 8% of passengers, the line was required to report it to the CDC as it exceeded the CDC's 3% threshold for filing an official report. 
The ships immediately put in measures to reduce infection, not knowing if this was norovirus, a much more common infection. Salmonella outbreaks are rare on cruise ships, with this being the first for 2024. And while being on ship with an outbreak of any kind would be upsetting, that isn't the end of the story. So many guests who found themselves ill didn't report to the medical center since they didn't want to have to pay for treatment. This is why it's important to have travel insurance. But even though I always get travel insurance, it would take a lot to get me to go to the medical center. I rarely go to the doctor on land unless I just have to. I'm not going to the medical on board ship just because I'm sick. The problem is that the cruise line has given out future cruise credits to those who did go to medical and were kept in isolation or confirmed as seriously ill by the ship's medical team. So those who toughed it out on their own are finding it hard to get that compensation. Now, there are two lessons here. One, it get travel insurance and go to medical if you're really sick especially if there are rumors on board that there are a lot of other people sick as well. The other is that you need to wash your hands before you eat. Not just before you go to the buffet, but after touching all those serving utensils and before touching your food or utensils. I forget sometimes too, but it really needs to be a habit. Residents of Juneau, Alaska recently voted on whether or not they want to ban cruising one day a week in a proposal dubbed Ship Free Saturdays. The proposal stated that cruise vessels carrying 250 or more passengers, which is about everybody, would not be allowed to dock in Juneau on all Saturdays of the year, plus the 4th of July. So far, it looks like cruising has won the day with 60% voting against the proposal. The final results won't be available until the 11th. Now, while I understand where locals who want their town back are coming from, I also wouldn't choose to live in a port city. I just don't think it makes sense to live in a cruise port and then get mad that there is cruising. That would be like living next to a farmer and getting mad that he has cows. Unfortunately, it really doesn't matter who was there first, as the reality is what the area is like now. The town has already put some restrictions on cruising, Last summer, Juno agreed to a policy that would address some of the cruising congestion by putting into place a maximum amount of berths allowed to dock on any one day. Beginning in 2026, only 16,000 berths will be able to dock. This means that the amount of beds on all ships docked during the day cannot exceed 16,000. That number lowers to 12,000 on Saturdays. Meanwhile, cruisers to Haines, Alaska will be paying more for their cruises as the town has approved a cruise passenger fee for the first time. Starting from the 2025 Alaska cruise season, visiting cruise ships will be subjected to a $9 per passenger charge. And as you know, that's going to be passed on to the cruisers. But that's not all. This decision also includes locked-in increases to the fee over the next few years. It will rise to $12 in 2027 and then increase to $13 per passenger in 2029. The fee is designed to fund port improvements and other cruise port-related infrastructure projects. The small town of Haines, with a population of around 2,000, handles around 100,000 cruise passengers a year. Now I have one more story this week, but first, if you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something, consider subscribing with a notification bell on so you don't miss out on any future posts. I'm pretty sure most cruisers would love to feel that cruise lines listen to them when they make complaints and suggestions. Well, Carnival has definitely done that when it comes to one popular request for Celebration Key. After a discussion on John Hill's Facebook page, where many cruisers said that lockers would be a great addition to the private destination, Carnival has decided to make changes to their plans and add lockers so that guests can lock up their valuables while enjoying their time at Celebration Key. John Hill stated, Yesterday it was requested that we install lockers at the lagoons on Celebration Key. The Beards read your comments, so I was told last night that they would indeed install lockers for those who need them. Specifics have not come out yet on where these lockers will be located or how much renting a locker will cost, and I'm assuming that it will cost cruisers because 
when does it not cost cruisers? Well, I don't want to finish this video without commenting on the tragedy occurring due to Hurricane Helene. Now, I have been appalled at the lack of assistance from our federal government. What little they have done, I find personally an insult. Yet, I have been encouraged by all the work being done by private citizens and churches. Once again, the true American spirit is shown by those who don't have a stake in the game. They just want to help other Americans out. Unfortunately, many of these stories are not making it to the mainstream news. One of my favorites has been the Mountain Mule Packer Ranch, which has brought in their train mules to help in areas that cannot be reached even by helicopter. This group has been around for 30 years and even helps train the military to use pack mules. There's one video they posted on their Facebook page that I want to share because it really shows the American spirit that I'm talking about. Go be safe! Thank you guys for clearing the path. Well, when y'all come back, we should have it all gone. All hey, gone. that's well, good enough that's right good there. Thing. I don't think they're going to be coming back that quickly. There you go. Well, as you can see, the mules are able to traverse terrain that no one else could, not even a four wheeler. Meanwhile, just average American dudes are out there with their skid steers and chainsaws clearing a path. Absolutely none of this is being done using our tax dollars. These are people donating their time and equipment to help out others. I'm not going to get into specifics because this is a cruise channel, but if you would like to see exactly what has been going on with FEMA and your tax dollars, the information, it's easy to find. If you would like to donate directly to this amazing cause and help the Mountain Mule Packer Ranch purchase supplies, I will put their Venmo link in the description. This is the link the group has posted on their Facebook page and is the one that they're asking people to use. So are you ready for more information on cruising? Why not stick around and check out this video and then come back for more information designed to help you have an amazing cruise. Have a blessed week, everyone.